Welcome to the Gig Boss Podcast. We've got Tess Nyberg on the show today. She is a group creative director at Martin Williams Advertising and has worked with brands like Cheerios, Skippy, Reese's, Lara Bar, Totino's, Hormel, and the list goes on. She sits on the board of Minneapolis Mad Women, an organization that exists to empower women's voices and increase gender equity in the Twin Cities creative industry. We're going to spend some time talking about how music is chosen for ads in her circle, uh, and we're going to learn about her awesome life, too. Please welcome to the podcast, Tess Nyberg. <sighs> wow, that's quite an intro. Right? It's probably the best walk-up I've had. Nice. Fantastic. Good to hear. Uh, so, hey, I uh, how are you, first of all? Good. Good. I'm good. You're doing good. Are you, like, working from home a lot still? I am. Yeah, I love it. I, I'm exclusively working from home, but we have to start going back a couple days a week starting in March. Wow. Okay. They're just, they're like about to lift the uh, mask mandate at, at the university here, which is really interesting. Uh, I heard they're doing that at a lot of schools uh, around the Twin Cities now too. Yeah. I think they saw like a huge spike and then it's now gone down significantly since basically everybody, <laughs> basically yeah. everybody got it, you know, it's like a different, uh, different game. Uh, well, hey, I read an uh, interview that you gave where you talked about storytelling and you talked about the idea that you're paid to make peanuts dance and also to make people cry. Can you talk a little bit about uh, advertising being like a fulfilling experience for you, maybe finding joy in it, even meaning in that in that sort of way? Yeah, I mean, I love advertising. I can't believe that people pay me on a daily basis to um think of stories, tell stories. Uh, you know, I think advertising gets kind of a bad rap. People think you're just trying to push things, but as a creative, I get to, um, you know, have multiple personalities basically. And when I work for fiber one, maybe I'm talking to boomers. And when I work for gushers, I'm trying to talk like a 14 year old skateboarder. Yeah. And I love that. I love that I get to have multiple personalities. I get to bring out multiple emotions. I get to have like short form stories, long form stories. Uh, I think it's great. Is it? Is it mostly like, are you finding that the ads are getting shorter and shorter? I, like I also read that you said something like in 60 seconds or in six seconds, which is more like what it's like now, right? Yeah, that is the truth. I would say um, almost every assignment that we get it's a 15 and a six and some social, uh, that kind of thing. Wow. It's so rare to get thirties and, you know, watching the Super Bowl, I was just sitting there thinking, I don't even know what I would say in 60 seconds. I mean, wow. it's like so foreign now to ever have that much time. So I want, I want to talk a bit about like, how music placements work in six second ads or 15 second ads. But I, I also want to know a little bit about your history. So l let's, let's back up a little bit. Did you grow up in a in a creative house? Did you did you feel like uh like do you look back on your childhood now and go like, oh yeah, that thing that I did really prepared me to do what I'm doing now, or like this this play based thing I was doing really prepared me to do what I'm doing now? Um, I think that I just naturally always had a huge imagination, um, and was always making up stories and kind of like the lead cousin or the lead friend. Uh, saying, let's all be store owners now. Let's be whatever. So, I mean, I think just like childhood prepared me. Mm. Um, but I think it was more things I was interested in. I mean, both my parents are accountants. Um, my brother also like was almost an accountant. It wasn't a super creative household. Not that creativity wasn't fostered, but you know. Yeah, that's interesting. I. I was under the impression that your parents, because we know each other, I was under the impression that your parents were, are they business owners too? Were they entrepreneurs? Um, my mom became a business owner, but not, not necessarily. Like that's not just, I don't think that's in their blood. Yeah. Okay. I think they're more, uh, my family was more like rule followers, but mm. I was definitely a little color outside the lines. Yeah. You know, my students, are all engineering majors you know it's like I, I have a lot of music students but they're they're all engineering majors and they're you know that's one of the things we say about them is that they're rule followers and it's like you fundamentally as an accountant i imagine you fundamentally have to be a rule follower to do the job right you know you know what's interesting though i guess i should say i am also a rule follower but i think it makes me maybe i mean i don't know if i can say a better creative but like it's working out for me in my job 
because I love clients give me a brief, tell me all the rules. Now I know the sandbox I can play in and I'm going to push it as far as I can go and like right. think bigger and whatever. But then my big crazy ideas are still always within that sandbox. So they're actually like achieving something for the clients or saying the right message, which matters. I mean, right. Well, something that's so open-ended, it's difficult to find where you want to go, right? It, when you have like some limitations, then you then you kind of know you're like, oh, I can go this way. I can go that way because I have to live within these walls. Um, it gives you th- tension to push off of, which is better. Yeah. Yeah. There's this really famous, there's this jazz piano player, Keith Jarrett. There's this really famous recording called the Cone Concert. And he recorded it because the piano was awful and he at first he like refused to do the show but it was like this young promoter in germany who put the show together and she begged him to play and he was like okay we'll record it so that we can send it to other people and show them like how horrible this piano is and how this is the unacceptable sound of a piano i will not perform on a piano like this right and then it became like his most famous album his most famous concert and and a part of that is that like he was presented with limitations based on the piano this this instrument that he knew so well Right. And then he was presented with all these limitations and he found kind of like his brilliance in that. I think it's a really cool uh, analogy in the same way where you're talking about with having some boundaries with ads, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's cool. So, I, you know, I've always admired how you interact with music. Um, I have specific memories of you working on an ad or like brainstorming something and coming up with a cute little song that maybe you're singing into a, a voice record or something. My takeaways myself are always when I hear you do these things, I'm always like, damn, my music is way too complicated. Like I should be writing simpler things. Uh, but but I, and I don't mean that as a I don't mean that as a, as a negative thing at all. Uh, I think like you're, the things you come up with that I've seen on the fly are like catchy, cutesy, nostalgic maybe. Um, and, and I wonder like, do you, do you use that information when you're putting music in an ad? Do you send that ahead to somebody who might be putting music in an ad or who might be composing music for an ad? Uh, it's tricky. Yes. Um, <laughs> there, well, so sometimes you're trying to pitch something with like, oh, and what if we like had a song like or a jingle or, and you know, jingles like aren't as big now as they were, you know, they yeah. had a moment in the nineties um, where everything was a jingle and a right. song. Um, but I do sometimes try to write spots that would have something like that in it. And the problem is I can only like the melodies I make up are always something I've heard before. Cause I'm not a musician. Right. So, and we can't use that because of copyright, obviously. Um, so we'll bring that to a music house and be like, so make this, but better and different, which is great. Then there's like the non jingle things. It's interesting that when we're making things, a lot of times we'll go in and say, Oh, we think we're going to want like something slow and emotional with this. Or maybe we say we we're definitely going to want like a rock song. But then when you get the picture back, I, I never like just put rock against it. I'll, I'll pull like from a stock house or something, I'll pull blues and I'll pull um, something slow and then something fast and then something okay. clappy. And like, you want to see it all against picture because you never know which one is going to click and be like, whoa, that's actually way better. Um, uh, so you're really playing with a lot of different recordings. You're like, going- I like to. Yeah. But a lot of what we do too is with um, stock music. So if it's not with stock music, um, then it gets a little more specific. We've had that where we write up specs and the good news is normally the musician, the music houses that we go to will bring us back what we asked for and then what they think might be better, which is great because yeah, I feel like when you're making a TV spot, everyone should be doing their job, which is making it better than the other people can. So Okay. Anyway, so they they bring obviously a ton to the table and they'll push you and say like, I know you asked for like slow piano, but what if I added these other five instruments in here, including this? And I'm always blown away. And then it's so cool seeing them peel back the layers. Okay, let's take out this. Oh, what what if we, now that I saw it against picture, what if we added like a drop moment with no sound or, you know, yeah. No music for a second there and then started it back up and just how those little things can drive a storyline 
is really cool. Right, right, right. So then are you sending that back to the music house and going like, can we add this in this spot? And then they'll send you an iteration of it? Yeah, sometimes we get to go in and work with them um, mm. even and have a session. That's that's the best because then, you know, with their machines, they can just drop something off. And I love when they're like, oh, you know what we need? they're like, hold on a second. They just walk into the studio with like a random instrument they picked up while walking in because musicians are amazing and can play like a hundred things. <laughs> and they just like record a little thing that they add in. You're like, yeah. Um, so that's fun. Yeah, that's great. That's really cool. You know, I've been uploading my music to some of these licensing databases, music houses, you know, uh, and what they ask for is they ask for, Oftentimes they ask for like, can you do this without the vocal? Can you do this without the lead line? Can you give us this without the? So they'll give, they'll ask for multiple versions of it, um, and so that they can kind of go. If you come back and go, I don't want the vocal in there. Can we just do the instrumental, or can we just do the drum beat rather than the rest of the stuff? It's like they can kind of easily peel that stuff away, uh, which is really interesting to hear you say all that. Well, you know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say some of the stock sites even are clearly better stock sites or better music houses and they have all that available so when you click on a song you can even click the different versions and hear them oh yeah Um, okay and especially having a lyric and no lyric version helps a lot because a lot of times a spot can't have lyrics under somebody talking or something yeah um so that is super helpful and then sometimes they also give you like 30 and 15 and six second cuts of that same thing that are pre-cut or like made for that and sometimes that's great and sometimes it's like i want to buy the three minute version and take this little spot and then the music house will help us give it an ending or you know they'll help us like smooth it out to work um sure but it feels less forced right so when you say stock versus a music house you're 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 clearly like picturing two different entities when you say stock, is this like uh, is this more generic music you're thinking of? A, a company that maybe offers more generic. Do you have a Do you have a name of a company that you work with? Um. Okay. There's like Pond Five has music, and Pond their Five. music it's totally like probably one of I'm guessing one of the cheaper stock sites. You don't ever really talk to a person there. Hmm. They must just let musicians upload stuff. Um, and honestly it's cheaper music and you can kind of tell, like, it's not as quality when you're finding it. It just feels, it feels like stock. You know what I mean? Sure. Versus music houses. Um, let's say like, uh, black label music or Marmoset. Oh, Um, I've worked with black label. Cool. Yeah. Black labels in the twin cities. Marmoset is great. They're not, or, uh, national, I think they're in um, Portland. A buddy of mine who lives in Portland works there. Yeah. Or somebody I know. I shouldn't say he's a buddy. <laughs> yeah, they're great. So if you work with them, you oftentimes talk to a rep. You tell them what you want. They pull tracks for you, which is great because they have a better ear. You sure. know, you'll even send them the spot or the script or something, and they'll pull tracks for you. And then if you like something, they more often know the musicians because they're actually reaching out to musicians. A lot of them are trying to build their library constantly, so they'll just have like... I don't know if you'd even call it studio musicians, but like, I think black label probably has the same, you know, group in the twin cities of musicians that they have come in yep. just try to keep making like, all right, let's make a blue CD. Let's make a whatever CD to just keep building their library. Yep. Um, and then they more often than not, if you're like, we love this track, but could you ever take out that weird thing? Or like, could you just add like two more loops of this? They can do that because they probably have all the splits and everything. Right, right. That's cool. And so for for our listeners, we'll we'll link some of these uh, some of these sites. I know we've linked Marmoset in previous episodes. We'll link uh, Black Label in Minneapolis as well. It's just good to know what these places are. And as musicians, it's like if you're wanting to get into that ad space, sometimes it's sometimes it's like where do I even go with my music? Um, yeah, I work I'll with send the- you more of my favorites actually. That would be great. Yeah, we can add those. Uh, we can add those to the show notes. Um, I've worked with a, a company called Who's the Boss in Chicago, and uh, they're basically just like upload everything you have. I don't care what it is, you know. <laughs> so, so it's like a, our whole library of of albums has been has been slowly kind of uploading to their database, and 
I had a couple. I had like a big band thing licensed for a barbershop, and um, it's always interesting when when something that was not intended to be written as in for an ad gets used. You know, yeah. Um, because I, you know, oh, I, you know, I wanted to ask too because you you talked about uh, quality, the difference in quality with a stock versus working with a music house. How important is quality to you? Like, how often are you using uh, stock music versus music that's uh, from a music house? Uh, we would always prefer to use a music house, or even custom music would be our ideal. Yeah. Um, it's just. I think that in this age of content, when brands are kicking out, you know, hundreds of things all the time, sometimes that's not an option. Sometimes it's, it has to be cheap. And then we're digging, you know, the trade-off is suddenly we're listening to stock tracks for four hours to try to find that diamond in the rough that like right. sound like, you know, like I wrote it, frankly. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know? sure. So then they're spending more money on your time. Totally. Kind of. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of silly almost. It's like yeah. just use the good music. Yeah. Uh, that's Let's that's have the pros pull it. And- yeah, yeah. That's interesting to me. Uh, you know, I've been reading this book um called Tracks That Sink and he talks about quality being one of the really important aspects. He talks about getting out of the perfection trap like don't don't uh don't get hung up on a track like get it out there cuz it can be making you money but also like it needs to sound high level professional you know and if that means you gotta yeah. hire a drummer to play the drum part then do that you know yeah i mean when i look for music i'm normally looking for feel or pace is really important hmm. um that it feels like it matches it or like will it speed this along and keep you know whatever so some of that it's like not even i don't know those are like the early things that just like jump yeah. off and then it's like okay what has like the unique thing like oh it has this moment or hmm. it's all about feels we're trying to find feels trying to find feels mm-hmm. so you know are you looking for a big drop moment too like i know a lot of ads it's like you know it's like there's an ad that you know somebody's doing something and somebody else is doing something and then it's like boom we're into the next area of the of the ad where this cool thing has happened because now we have whatever this food that we love or you know uh, I think drop moments. Yes. I more often than not, I'm looking for, um, like a lot of ads have a reveal your storytelling. So it's like this, 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 Oh, and then there's an emotion, like right. whether it's you're laughing or you're thinking, Oh, or whatever. So like finding ones that kind of have that, like, Oh, and then it lifts at the end. That's perfect. Or huh. does that, I mean, I, yeah, I go through a lot of tracks just trying to find that moment that will help the storytelling, like, oh, right. it's going up here, or, oh, it's, like, settling, or... Right, so it needs to have shape. Yeah, I right? mean, this is what I'm reading, too, is that, like, the, these people that are experts in, in getting placements, it's, like, they're they're talking about, uh, they're talking about shape, they're talking about emerging through the clouds and, you know, having their all of a sudden, yeah. be, you know... A now little that turbulence, you say that, maybe. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And yeah. actually, when I look at um, music sites or stock sites, they normally show the, I don't know what you call it. What do you call it? The, the wave file? Yeah, the wave file. So I just like skip ahead to any moments that are like, they're big. Oh, they go down. Or like, oh, this one ah. is like spiky. I skip to those moments because I want to know where does this song go? Is it going anywhere? Does it have any big things? Ooh, we can use this section. And then I just skip to the next song to listen. Wow. When I'm like listening. See, that's so fascinating. I think that's such great information for our listeners is like, if you're going to be writing music for ads, like there has to be a moment for this. Since you're skipping ahead to find it, it's like you're skipping through the yeah. rest of the stuff. It's like right that big moment. Yeah. yeah. That's very... Uh, so, so where do you, in the process of making an ad, so my musician head is like, the first thing you're thinking about is music, but like that clearly can't be right. Is it, it's later in the process for you? Like when, when in the process of making an ad, are you thinking about music? Um, I don't think about music until we get to the edit. That's when we need it. Cause we need to see. I, oh, well, almost always I'm thinking about the story first. I'm a writer though. So like yeah. I'm thinking about the story, what's the story we're telling. And then we go shoot it. And then the music always can totally change the edit. So like when I see it all cut together, 
um, what's it going to feel like? What's going to drive it? And that's when we start looking and start putting things up against it. And you start having like, Ooh, that was nice. Um, cool moments. Cool. And a lot of editors look for music, you know, yep. they're good at it because they have to listen to it a thousand times. <laughs> Interesting. So the editor might be somebody that, that suggests music for, for an ad. A lot of times they'll, they'll be like, Oh, I just dropped this on. I mean, you guys can keep looking, whatever. And then it's huh. like, Whoa. And then you fall in love with it. Wow. That's interesting. Are these people, are your editors in house? Are you always, are you shipping editing out to freelancers? Yeah. Always out to like edit houses and stuff. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's a whole scene. And it's, so many musicians are good at editing video now too. It's like, that's, we kind of all have to, we have to be engineers and video editors and musicians, you know, it's like we have to do all of that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> cool. So what, uh, if you had to name, you know, is there, like we kind of talked about this maybe a little bit with your, with your, with your peaks and valleys, but is there a common thread? Like if you had to name a common thread between all the music you've programmed and ads, is there one common thread that you can think of? Is there something that all of the music you've chosen uh, embodies in some way? Um, gosh. No. No, there's <laughs> not. I don't have a good answer. Yeah. I, I'm a big percussion person, so I always listen for the beat first. Like, yep. is it driving it forward? Is it moving it forward? Yeah. Momentum. That's, yeah, that's not helpful, but... I mean, I think it is helpful. You know, it's like there's plenty of ways to write tracks. And if you're thinking about groove and momentum, it's like that's uh, that's a good piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. It seems like you deal a lot with uh, with nostalgia in your ads. Um, I was just kind of watching some of the stuff on your website and um, reading a little bit about what you're saying about your process. Um, I think a lot about those kinds of nostalgic longing feelings and how they relate to music when I write music as well. Can you talk a little bit about the power of nostalgia uh, in and the, the nostalgic feeling in the advertising space? Um, you know what's interesting is right now in nostalgia, I feel like every project we're doing is trying to hit. They're always trying. They're almost always trying to sell to moms. Just yeah. so you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, moms buy everything in the house, including like if you're getting new windows. If you're getting new garage door, like it's somehow it's always the the woman buying. Wow. Um, anyway, long story short is nostalgia right now is like 90s. So we're constantly looking for like things that would remind them of their prime. Uh, sure. So, so you're, it's, you're weird. Like, it's, it's like millennials, like millennials now are sort of right. People that grew up in yeah. the 90s. Gen Xers, yep. millennials, they're the ones who are now like adults with kids and have maybe have some money and can spend it. Yep. Yep. Uh, which is kind of great because that's me too. So when I listen to songs and I mean, I know, I feel like maybe you were asking about nostalgia a little more um, like sentimental, but I think right now, like 90s jams, hip hop kind of things. I've looked for that a million times lately. Wow. So. And that, I mean, the Super Bowl halftime show is a good example of that, right? It's like for the first time, the music of the 90s, the real heavy, like the stuff that was real popular during our childhoods that was represented in the Super Bowl. Previously, yeah. it was always like Janet Jackson or Prince or Bruce Springsteen or whatever. You know, it's like always older, older yeah. gen artists. Uh, uh, that's interesting to hear you say that, that the 90s is now the nostalgic. I, I, I heard something that like, I don't know if it was a meme I saw or something. It was like when you walk into the grocery store and they're playing your jams, that's when you know that like you're now the old person in the we're the old person in the grocery store. And I walk yeah. into I walk into gyms here locally, and it's always playing some '90s jams. I'm like singing. I'm like, oh man, this is uh, they've pinned me. We're, I feel we're there. I feel seen in some sort of way. <laughs> Uh, cool. I got a couple more questions. Are there any, uh, particular ads you can think of? And maybe, maybe this is something we could link in the show notes that people could watch where you really felt like the music was a big part of the ad and maybe really perfectly kind of fit what you were doing. Is there anything you can think of off the top of your head? Um, 
that I did. Yeah. Or I guess any any ad, if you're like somebody who studies ads, you must be somebody who watches ads and thinks about it, but there yeah. Uh I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but there are ads that like are it's perfect. Yes. Um and especially I feel like sometimes you'll have ads and you're like, if we could use I mean, watch the Super Bowl ads actually. Yeah. They're using you know, they're paying the big bucks for star things, but it, they are a lot of times they're paying it because it is the perfect song for that. It's, it's saying the right words. It's saying, um, you know, and everybody loves it, but I, I could probably send you a couple after. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. We could link some stuff. Um, let's get, let's get, let's talk back again. We, we kind of, touched on this for a second six second and 15 second ads what's what's placing music in those ads like are you even placing music in those ads is, or is it like you're expecting that people won't even click on the sound when they're I'm, I'm assuming we're talking like stories on instagram facebook tiktok well except now like 15 second ads that is the ad buy for um hulu youtube tv all i mean ah. I, I would guess I feel like most commercials are 15 seconds now, not thirties. And that is where we're watching TV. So that is like the new TV is digital right. video. Uh, definitely put sound. I put sound in everything I can. Sometimes I assume if it's social only that they might not listen, but I would personally still put music in there because what if they do like right. give them a better experience? Um, the six second ones are hard to get anything in, but you would be surprised you can get, you can still in six seconds get moments. And that's where we're really looking for the shape. I'm glad you gave me a word for that. There you um, go. Because yeah, you can find those moments where it's not just background music and it can still cue a little emotion. Right. Um, and 15s, you definitely can. And like I said, uh, I think it's nice to pull from full tracks, even if you're only looking for 15 seconds. But that's where I love looking at track when I start to think like, oh, I like this. Where does this go? And the more things you can give me like, oh, it has this break in the middle. Oh, it has this up thing. It just gives me more options to be like, yeah, we could put that part in the 15. Right. Um, cool. Yeah. And we can always add like, or, or by we, I mean our music people can always add like a beat to give it like the finality or yep. whatever I'm looking for instead of just a fade out or something. Sure. Yeah. That's uh that's pretty fascinating. Yeah. I d wasn't even considering that now it's like, yeah, we just watch TV on Hulu and Netflix and Netflix doesn't even, I mean, I guess Netflix probably has ads at some point. Does it even have ads? I don't that's think it does. Question. Hulu does. does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Hulu, other, other, YouTube other streaming TV. sites. Yeah, Peacock, all those others. YouTube TV, yeah, that's big. YouTube TV. Yeah. YouTube TV is like that feels like the new TV to me cuz you actually get some channels yeah. and you can yep. save things. Yeah, that's interesting. Um so last question. Say you're invited to speak in front of a bunch of young aspiring composers who want to work in the ad space. What advice do you give them? I'm a huge uh, fan of advertising. Let's do both. They want to do one. One group wants to do music and advertising. One group just wants to do ads. Wants to write. Wants to be. Wants to do the creative side, like what you're doing. Um, I would say, being in advertising, I think it's one of the coolest jobs because what other jobs? I mean, do you go to and it's different every day. You get to talk in different voices. You get to sometimes be really big creative, like literally your writing in a leprechaun voice or thinking about unicorns seriously, like yep. legit, like how do we make that unicorn? Um, <laughs> like there are so many times I'm like, this is the best conversation that I bet most people are not having at their jobs. So I really like it. There's obviously downfalls to the industry too, but I'm totally like a nerd. Um, but as far as doing music in advertising goes or co composition, I do think on some level, if you get, if you can connect with a music house 
and be one of, on their CDs or whatever they call it that they're making. Yep. They're still listed as albums. Um, those are the ones that they're also probably feeding us first when we're saying, Hey, can you give us some hits against this? Cause they, they want that. So right. that's a great way to actually probably make money on it. And they know how to fill in their library and what's missing and everything. So I, I mean, I would try to connect with music houses and do that. But if it's the kind that are just saying, send everything in for sure, send everything in. Because when, like when I'm looking to, if I listen to one, you know, Adam Meckler orchestra thing and kind of liked it, I'll oftentimes just click on that name and be like, okay, this is the kind of vibe I want. Let's see what else they have. Do they ah. have something slow? Do they have whatever? So you can go through by artist too. Yeah. I, I'm very embarrassed. I do have a favorite stock music artist. Is that a thing that anybody has? I but guess. I have, this, I have this woman that I love who's like what I would call fake Lizzo. Uh -huh. But I love that like, you know, most stock music, I'm not getting that jam. I'm not getting like, like actually feeling like, are they going to swear in this song? And they don't because it's stock music. Right. I love that. And I've actually used so many of her tracks on things just yeah. because like, that's what I want to listen to, you know? Sure. It doesn't sound stock. That's so interesting. And for the people that are, there's so many people who live in that beat making producer space as musicians and have either our hip hop artists themselves or have hip hop artist connections. It's like, that's, that's a really, that's probably, I mean, it, is there a lot of that in, of that kind of music in, in your space? I wish there was more. I mean, to, to the point that like, I always want to find something that doesn't sound like stock things that sound like stock to me now are like songs with clapping and snapping and like, yeah. Uh, I don't know. There, there's just like so much of that out there. So when anything that feels fresh or interesting, which is probably just what you want to make anyway, yep, is great when you stumble across it because it is different, you know? Right. Right. Or like anything that sounds like pop music because things don't actually sound that much like pop music mm. when, when you're looking at those sites. Awesome. Well, that's a good, uh, that's a good place to leave it. Start writing some hip hop music producers. Get it up on those databases. It's just, there's Seriously. not enough. There's not enough. Uh, well, Tess, thank you so much for hanging. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to to talk with us, and uh, we'll we'll link your stuff. We'll link your website in the show notes and the various different things we talked about. Uh, yeah, we appreciate we appreciate your knowledge and your perspective. This is uh, this is something I think musicians don't often get to hear from the people that are actually making the ads and choosing the music. Yeah. Well, thanks for, for having me on. This was fun. Awesome. Cool. See you. Bye.